Hello friends, and welcome back for another episode of, um, well, I'm just going to do this, uh, another episode of uh, Simple Haskell, um, and so I decided I'm going to do things just slightly differently here. Uh, for a lot of my tutorials, I like to show the thinking that I'm doing, um, however, it does take a little bit more time, and I think it does stop me from being as concise as I can be. Um, and so I'm really curious, this is, you know, another, yet another experiment on this channel about uh, how to do this in the perfect kind of fashion um, and the best way to teach Haskell, I suppose. Um, and so, um, so what I've done in, in this new kind of format is I've set up the brunt of the tutorial um, already. And so everything that we're going to talk about in the tutorial, you can see here. Um, my one worry was that it would be a little bit of an overload. Um, that it wouldn't be authentic and you guys wouldn't see my thinking in full and that there would be pieces I would miss out on so like let me know if you feel that is the case um, but otherwise I think you know it, it should actually go quite well and so what this one uh, is on is on monad transformers and so and we're not talking about the Decepticon um, or Optimus Prime or any of that. We're talking about Monad Transformers. And so what is a Monad Transformer? Well, um, this, so the Transformer logic, it, or the yeah, the, the type construction logic um, is a paradigm in Haskell. And so you might see, so you might come across, uh, for example, in the parsing um, video, there was a parsec t and so parsec t we did not talk about this like this but uh parsec t is a monad transformer and so what that means is that it's combining a couple monads so for instance um i could combine parsec t with uh io which would mean that in my my do statements here so let's say I have this. I'm going to write this quick, and we're going to say my uh, my parsing function. And this has the type. I'm going to start out by doing the general um, notion here. This is parsec t um, sum, and implicitly, while well, we had our constraint of stream that was always present, and Implicitly in stream, uh, stream is saying that this must be a monad. This M must be a monad, um, and so anything that is a anything that fits this stream constraint must be also a monad. Uh, and so I could do this, for instance, just to make it verbose, but um, it doesn't really mean anything. And I, I probably will get an error, or sorry, not error, uh, warning saying that I have a redundant constraint and I can get rid of that. Um, and so that's how this works. Uh, and now let's sort of, um, you know, make this into a given instance. So I could say parsec t s u i o um, units and this is valid. And so this would, what this would do is, you know, so of, of course, um, you know, we are aware of the parsing functions that we can do. I could do something simple like read a character from our parser. So that's going to read an E. Um, it's, it's going to read an E from the string. Uh, in the, in assuming that I'm not writing running anything before this, um, this is saying that the first character of uh, the string that we want to parse, uh, which will be given to this function, and again, the, the, um, you know, e even when we're writing this function, we're not even defining that string. This, the string is only defined when we run parse, which takes a parsec t. Um, it took a source name, so we're just going to ignore that. I'm just going to write that as, as if it doesn't exist. Um, and we had a string, or rather this s. And so let's say this is a string and this parameterizes as a string and this will allow us to uh, parse this string and give back um, 
some result wrapped in either. And this, and this was, I guess, parse error, was it? Um, this is this A coming from here? Um, and so, but you know, that when we write this parsing expression, it does not know, it does not actually know what the, um, the string is that, that it will be. It's just going to match on certain strings and be able to, so it's either going to, well, just read in the type signature here, it's either going to fail to read the given string, so the, the expression does not match, and it will give us a parse error, or it will read the string properly um, to the point that it needs to, it will find the full uh, match, and it will return that match. Um, so yeah, and, and whatever that match is, that match is highly polymorphic. Um, it can be literally anything that we define. Um, and so I guess here it would be car if we stopped here, right? It would be a car. Um, but anyways, we're just going to put that there because I'm not going to return anything from this function. So I'm going to put down here a pure. And um, yeah, so this this car is, um, so I have to, and this is going to complain, I believe. Oh, well, I'm definitely going to complain because I am not even in the right area. So cabal, REPL. Um, oh, let me fix this quick. That is not relevant to this. Um, so yeah, we can do that. And then let me just... This is not relevant. No, not relevant. Um, oh, give me a second. Sorry about that. I changed or I saved all of the um, the files in my project, and I had a lot of invalid code in there, so I had to delete a lot of stuff. Um, but anyways, where did we get to? So yeah, so I was saying that if we look at the type of car. We can see that, oh, uh, we can see that it is a monadic function, in that it returns something in wrapped in the parsec monad or parsec t monad, um, and of course you know parsec t gets parameterized with a bunch of stuff, and so technically, the actual monad is this parsec t s u m not parsec t. Parsec t is a, technically a type constructor, but just for the purposes of simplicity, I'm gonna call it parsec t in reference to the uh, parsec t sum monad. Um, so anyways, I can run this because, I can run this function uh, in my do block here because this is a, uh, you know, I'm in a parsec t uh, do block uh, or monad and so this is valid. Um, now it is also valid for me to do um, print, except not exactly. I could, so let me do, so let, let me just get this character. I know it's gonna be E, so I'm gonna call it E. And this is not gonna work at first. Um, and am I importing this in main? I'm not. Import transformers. And I'm just going to do that for now. And this is no longer 
able to deduce because I don't have an M in there. I have um, put that as IO. And this is the errors I was expecting. So um, this does not work because, um, well, I can still do this. And so how I'm gonna do this is if I do lift, and this might say variable not in scope, um, I think it's control.monad class. Uh, let me just check. Uh, so Google lift is from control.monad.trans.class. And uh, I want to import lift. is part of the transformers module so I need to add it to my cabal I've also added MTL which is another transformers library and this is going to update and we are back oh and actually I still need this the stream constraint except I need to make it slightly different Instead of um, having an M here, M is M is chosen, um, instantiated, if you will, but I still have to state that it is a stream or that um, the S fits into a stream. I could, um, I could put that this is a string here and then I believe that would work, but I don't really care. Um, so that, that works. And so this works once I do lift. So why does this work? Well, the reason for this, and this is not valid, but we, so um, I'm gonna pretend that parsec t is just as complicated as, um, as um, maybe. So, uh, parsec t, parsec t a, I'm just going to call it, and then if I say run parsec t, this has the type of m, you know what, no, that doesn't make sense, I, wh why I need to do this, I'm going to say in, in simpler terms, and then move on to maybe, because that would be a better example, rather than making up stuff about parsec, um, you know, what did parsec do to us? So what this is, why I have to do this is that IO is, um, so I, I always get confused about if I should call it the inner monad or it, it, it's really the contained monad. And, and how do I mean by contained monad? So um, we have another monad transformer here of maybe T. And so I could have something like maybe T I O A. And why can I do maybe T I O A? Because since I'm um, writing a type signature, oops. oh, <laughs> that's why I was going to be an error. Um, since I'm writing a type signature, I have two variables that I can choose for the following um, data constructors. So I can choose an M which um, as we can see by the virtue of how the um, maybe T type is constructed, it must be something that can accept uh, a maybe A. So not, not, not necessarily a monad. Um, we could write this with anything. Um, this could be something that just takes a singular argument, um, but in essence, it is a monad. Anything that you would do with operations around maybe T enforce that it that this M is going to be a monad. And so we wouldn't enforce that it's gonna be a monad in the type signature, or sorry, in the type declaration, I should say, um, but we do when we use it. And, um, and, and that's just because the functions that 
um, we use necessarily need it to be a, a monad for um, the function to work. So, um, yeah, so, and so in this case, if we have maybe T I O A, and we're just going to say unit, and, and so we're going to return a unit at the end of this, then we have maybe T I O unit, meaning this is going to be I O, and this is going to be a unit. And so, um, just to quickly review Haskell record types. Uh, since we are, of course, dealing with the Haskell record type. Um, well, there, there's, there's two things I'll, I'll mention here in terms of patterns with monad transformers. Uh, one, that it's a new type. And so we have a singular um, argument for our constructor, right? So this whole record is a singular argument to maybe T, our constructor, our data constructor, I should say. And... Um, we're usually going to see it as a record type. And so we have this function run maybe t where let's go back and forth and just you know destroy this and rebuild it kind of thing. Um, so I'm gonna say my maybe t is equal to, so I'm gonna construct one by doing um, pure just tuple this work oh I forgot a right um, and this isn't working because I don't have the proper module sweet so if I check the type of my maybe T I can see that So I'm just going to rewrite this and just say return. And we can see that the type of my maybe t is a maybe t m uh, just. And so there's no, uh, well, I could say um, return io equals return. And I'm going to make this the type. Turn IO is of the type A to IO A. And then I'm going to say return IO here, just so we're, we have the same example. And then I'm going to check the type of my maybe T. And I see that it is of the type maybe TIO. Now I can work backwards. And uh, I can't print this because there's no show instance for this, I believe. Right. Um, and so what I can do instead is I can say run maybe t. And run maybe t of my maybe t. And so what this is going to do, just like any other record, is this is going to um, extract this from the record and the, the constructor. And so we see we have uh, just and so wh why is it showing like this if we check the type of this because that is a little deceiving we can see that's a type io maybe and so because we're in the REPL um, this is just going to if, if I, I believe if the REPL gets an io action it is just going to run it and then get the result um, so in the case of uh, of this um, that would be the wrapped just just top or just unit um yeah and so now back to the question of like why do we need to lift in this case um so we would we will need to lift um anytime we want to use this inner monad and so in this case our inner monad is io so we need to say lift um, let's say this was some other, um, you know, uh, this is maybe, let's say, then I guess what, what can we do here? What's a monadic thing we could do? I could say, I believe I could say lift, 
uh, just E. And I'm actually going to need to get rid of this because that's no longer valid. And that's also invalid because I don't. Oh, and I need to change this as well. And that works. So this doesn't really do much because, I mean, what is the point of that? I could do something that, you know, will return a maybe. Like I could say is E and then is E, I don't know, this is also redundant, but is E takes a car and returns a maybe, uh, maybe car very useless still but uh, I, I, I guess it's more useful um, and so you know I, I guess my point here is that we could have some sort of monadic function for the inner monad um, that runs some logic using that inner monad and there's a, there's a couple function or sorry a couple monads that I've left out so far because um, I don't think there is a place yet in our brains for them um, before we get to get through monad transformers. Um, but effectively, that's what we're doing. Anytime we want to use uh, the inner monad, um, we're going to use lift. And that's how we can, we can write a, an overall monad here, which has two monads inside of it. And so... What the, and, and, and just to go back to plain spoken English, the reason why we want both monads is so that we can use the effects of both monads. Um, you know, maybe is, is a hard case to kind of sell here, um, but we could do something very real with parsec t, um, parsec t, um, s u i o. Um, if I run my parsing function, so I could say, um, I believe this should work. Uh, I have, I've never actually tried this, but we'll, we'll try my parsing function. Um, you know, source name, and I'm going to give it the string of E. Oh, I need to import text.parsec first. And it demands... Yeah, uh, I could say, okay, I believe if I say, uh, what's the type of run parser t? Perfect. Um, so I can say run parser t in place, which is a little bit more, it's, it's parse, but just more general. And this should work. Um, I believe that should work. Uh, that would be my u. Uh, don't need to worry about what that is. Source name is nothing. And then my string is going to be an e. And we see that it prints out that e inside of the monad. And I can prove this by changing this up, printing this a ton of times. And so, you know, maybe this is a, an application of this that is useful is... Um, just debugging your parsers and actually now that i've kind of figured this out myself i would definitely use this i've, I've done a lot of blind parsing if i'll be honest um but uh yeah and so anyways moving on to maybe t um we're moving back on to movie t maybe t i was gonna say movie t but that's not the case um so anyways when we see maybe t, what we're what we're saying is that we are going to have maybe t, or what we, we're going to have the maybe we're going to have the the power of the maybe monad, as well as some other monad. And so, why is it written in this way? Um, well, the reason it's written in this way is so that we can write um, one type, and it has all of the the benefits of, or it, 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 it will work the same way, maybe will work the same way, regardless of what that other monad is. And so, written in this way, 
is like the most composable way uh, to build monad transformers. So uh, whether this is IO, whether this is another maybe, because again, this could be, this could be maybe, uh, heck, this could be even maybe T, which we'll come back to. Um, sorry, one second. Sorry about that. Uh, my brother apparently has come over and uh, brought his dog. So I heard a dog at the door and went, what the heck? Uh, that, I don't think that's the sound of Monad Transformers. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, where did we leave off? I, I believe we left off at um, uh, talking about how, we, you know, the Monad Transformers are built to be extremely composable. And so you will see even uh, in the wild, for example, with uh, Obelisk, a, um, uh, a library that, I, well, library slash framework that we will get to, that there is a massive stack of Monad Transformers, like a massive stack, um, <laughs> where you just see, you know, uh, the end result where it's like run uh, XT, run YT, run ZT, um, and just this massive chain of of running monad transformers and and so the reason for that is that um, they are getting the the power of some like 30 different monads and you might think like well okay wow isn't that like doesn't that become a bit of a pain in the butt and no there's actually uh, a lot of ways to make that quite simple and so in a lot of the um, in the classes that they that I've looked at, what they do is they kind of hide their use of lift, and so that I have you know let's say I I am running some code in this massive stack of monad transformers. I'm going to call this my monad stack. A, um, I can just do something like you know uh, get x from some monadic action. And um, this might be, you know, the seventh in Monad Transformer, where typically what I would, like, let, let's say, you know, it was seven in exactly, I would have to do lift dot lift dot lift dot lift dot lift, and um, I need two more. But there are ways to hide this when you um, when you when you write your cases for uh, your monad, or when you write um, certain functions, and I, I could I could definitely do a video on that, but I think it's a little bit out of the scope of of this one, and so um, and, and and that's very much a trick, but um, you know for for what I'll say in, in this video is that if we want to use the inner monad, and I'm going to assume that we are only using a stack of two different monad transformers, then um, like we are only going to be using lift, and um, and that that allows us to and what lift is doing is it is just figuring out the types for us. So if we have some monadic action, um, how does lift actually work? So I believe uh, uh, lift it like lift is so okay the type of lift oh uh, if I import it so this is for use with monad transformers we have a type class here monad trans and we can see that it's dealing with uh, specifically monad transformers. So T, uh, which takes an M and an A. So this TMA fits, for example, maybe TMA. So maybe T is a, oh, and it literally says this, maybe T is a valid instance of monad trans. And so that allows us to use this lift function where the inner monad, right? So um, if we had IO, um, unit here that would mean that we have IO unit and that it would fit into this equation 
so that we could um, we could lift it into the maybe T M A monad. Um, and 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 why do we even need to lift it? Well, again, everything in this do block has to fit the monad type. So um, if I have an F here, I know that this F is going to be of the type monad stack A. If I have, let's say, this F takes an, a singular argument, um, well then I know A, I have to apply the singular, singular argument so that it goes from, let's say, a string to a monad stack. And at the end of it, it's really just a monadic expression is a way to think about it. Um, but yeah, and so that's why we need why we need lift here. And so um, let's get into the actual mechanics of maybe t, just so we can see how this works. And so um, we want to build maybe t to be a monad itself. And so in order to build a monad, well, we just we just write it like any other. Um, well, not like any other. We 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 write it like you know how we would write the instance of of functor and, and applicative uh and monad for maybe right instance of monad maybe if you recall um maybe you recall haha and um here we're now just writing an instance for maybe t and the reason for that just to point out what the might be obvious is that maybe t itself is is a different type from maybe, um, and so you know on that point, uh, because it's definitely applicable here, uh, a lot of ways in which new types are used in Haskell is to override default behavior, and so um, that's kind of what we're doing here. We are overriding the default behavior of the two oops, inner monads, um, and kind of merging the two together. So, um, and so also too, what does this mean that like, we had this maybe T um, or this, you know, monad stack at each step? Um, well, one way we could write like a monad uh, step in a very raw fashion. Actually, I have it, I have one here. So, um, well, but, you know what, I, I won't go into that yet. Um, we could write maybe t, um, maybe t, oh, why am I blanking? So this has to be of the type m, maybe a, um, oh, I could say, well, I could do, I could do something like this where I say, um, get line. And I am going to pipe this get line to uh, pure dot just. So I believe this will work. And I will explain that in a second. Um, let's change this back to maybe T I O. Um, I don't really need that. that hold the yes um, this is apparently getting a string back yeah that makes sense okay yes because get line so get line would um, you know in a normal IO monad would so I'm just going to have my normal and it's going to be of the type IO string normal um, remember when I said that I had the tutorial planned out I suppose I just kind of go off of the uh, script so yeah but um, get line is what I would do here and then I suppose I would just return it um, here I am wrapping it in maybe. 
so this works. Um, and what this is saying, so, so like, so what I've done here, this is valid in terms of um, a, 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 a monadic expression or step uh, in the maybe T monad. Because what I've done is I've exactly constructed a maybe T M A. And so this is what a maybe T M A is. Um, I've just done it in, in what might look like a weird way. So, um, yeah, and, and that's like, I guess the raw form of it. Um, we could have, so I have, um, yeah. And, and now it, it, that's the raw form of it, but I don't know if that's super useful. I mean, we could definitely do more here. Like I could, um, run some more monadic functions just will accept like just as effectively saying whatever it is i don't care it is successful um, whereas i could have um, f where f is of the type uh, string and returns a maybe uh, let's say a maybe You know what, I'm just gonna say this actually. So if, yeah, let's actually, let's actually go through with this. So F, it's gonna do a check on the string and see if we should continue on. And so um, I can also do this. I can also extract it from this maybe T statement. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, um, if the string is equal to Hey, then just or no um well yeah just else nothing and so there's two things there's one of two things that are going to happen um if this returns nothing then we will never get to this point here, right? This point here. Um, so I can have a function which is going to print x. Think in Python for a second. Um, and so, yeah, this will short circuit if f returns um, nothing. And so in more simple terms, if I give it a string if it reads a string that is not hey, then this will short circuit and never print. So this will conditionally print if what I give it is hey. Kind of like a horse. Didn't hear any laughs. I'm assuming that's for a good reason. Um, oh, I want to say, wait. Yes, I, could, I, I would want to say that actually. Uh, run maybe t f. Oh, and oh, this is because I have this here. And now I'm actually going to properly import this control dot monad dot trans dot maybe. T, import the full thing. Ah, and I'm going to say lift dot print x. I didn't like that, so I'm just going to use the lazier version of that. And now this is saying that it's a unit return back because I'm doing print. This makes sense. Need to save and that compiles. So if I say F that's not going to work because well, why would it? So actually let me do this in my, my module here. I'm going to say um, do F. 
and this is going to be of the type IO because everything at the end of the day comes back to IO. Um, if you have, so this is actually an important point that I don't want to forget. Let's say you have a stack of 30 monad transformers, right? And so we have a maybe T looks like, it would look like this. Um, maybe T, and I'm going to use only maybe T for this just because, you know, that's fun. Um, how would this look? Oh, right. Maybe T M. So M, maybe T M would be my monad. And it would look like this. Um, but now I can continue to evaluate this M and say that this is a maybe T M. And again, I can say that this is a maybe T M. Uh, why I would do that, I don't know, but let's pretend these are slightly different monads and that I haven't done something that's completely pointless because um, I have just gotten the same effect multiple times. And, you know, I can do the same thing just through lift, I, I suppose. I don't know what I did here. That is actually of utility. Um, and, and so I can do this. I can just continually um, get this again and 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 again but I will guarantee you um, that in every single massive monad transformer stack that the base monad is this and so what does this mean and now that we're looking at something that is a bit complicated looking and how do we rectify with what we're doing with do f well we look back at the new type of maybe t and we see that this M that we give it is going to wrap maybe A. So we have the power of maybe anytime we're using maybe A, but maybe T or maybe is not the outer monad, right? It is not the outer monad. It is not written like this. I mean, that we then, you know, I don't really see what the point of monad transformers would be, but we have instead maybe a so eventually eventually and, and and let's you know take our simple example here um, of io this is going to evaluate to being io maybe a and so therefore this is the same thing this is really largely the exact same thing as if i had um you know i i could i could say let my my fake maybe t equal um, pure right pure where this pure is io um, and pure just one and this is my fake maybe t and I can run the number one is what I'm going to pull out of this or well actually no that's not true I'm going to so this is invalid, and I'm going to fix this in a second. Um, this is invalid because, well, let me make sh make it clear that it's invalid. This is invalid because this is not of the type may, uh, int. This is of the type maybe int. And so then I would have to do this annoying thing of, okay, case of the number one of just a, okay, Good. Now I can do more IO effects. Um, and I'm going to do something with A. I'm going to say print A. Uh, or it's nothing, and I'm going to say do uh, return and do nothing. And um, then I can also, you know, do more actions. Let's say this is my fake maybe T again. Um, and then we pull out the TNO for the number one. And then we could pattern match again and say case TNO of, and you know, of course now we, we have this expression of it must be, we know that every single time this is going to be just. 
Um, however, that's because we have made up this simple case to illustrate a point. Um, we don't know that, and so really, if we want to combine the functions or the effects of IO and uh, maybe, then we need the maybe T monad. Um, but um, yeah. Anyways, the the I, I guess the, the point I was going to build to there, and I, I I'm not sure if I had driven it home, is that um, you know the inner monad is um, you know at least for what makes sense to write you could write anything arbitrary, but for at least for what makes sense to write um, you're gonna usually have I O. The only other case that I can imagine is you're going to have identity, which is trying to get rid of having an inner monad. And that's actually what we do with parsec t um, when we are not using that run parsec t function we brought in. So when we're using parse, I think it actually might even show it. If we look at the info of parsec, it, yes, exactly. Um, it is using identity. And this, this is a fancy way of saying that this is going to be an A. So the reason we use identity there is because we don't really, we don't want to combine it with any other effects. We just simply want to parse. And so really, um, you know, what, um, I mean, with identity, the parsec t is more of a, a parsec, if you will, in that it's not a, it, it is a transformer, it's written as a transformer, but it's kind of downgraded from being a transformer by using identity. And that whole idea of, of using identity is very common in Haskell to kind of bring down um, powerful functions into a simplified functions. Um, but anyways, so do f is where we're gonna run our, our f sense and I'm going to say run maybe T F and this will work and why will this work well if I do where's the type of run maybe T I can see that it takes an, a maybe TMA and runs this maybe TMA in the monad that is uh, contained. So if this is IO, this is going, this is saying run this maybe T M A expression in, um, you know, in, in the IO, in the IO monad. And so now let me re refresh this or reload this. That's from this. This is pseudo Oh, and of course, this makes sense. Um, this is going to return maybe, uh, maybe unit. So, you know, it's going to return the last maybe result effectively is a way of thinking about it just like any other monad is going to return the last thing that we do um and so you know the last thing that we do here is we do a print which is going to return um our our unit inside of our maybe tio um and then uh this is going to because we're running maybe t, it's going to give us the last result as a maybe value. And so in this case, what we're going to see is that if I give this string hey for the um, get line when we run it, then I will um, see it print out. And I will implicitly be returning back. So, and this, and this should print just. Um, just unit at the end, as well as print out. 
Um, but it, the, the key point is that it's returning the last maybe result. Or it's, it's kind of, you know, run maybe t will return um, a, a maybe value. Uh, run either t will return an either value, um, and so on and so forth is kind of the pattern. Um, there's no such thing as run io, of course, because io is kind of a different beast, and we're always in the context of a of io. Um, I mean, there might be such a thing as, you know, for when our program itself is used, but it's nothing that we would ever use ourselves. Um, kind of cool to think about, maybe. So, there we go, that compiles. And I'm gonna say do f. As we can see, it is running get line. So even though it's wrapped in maybe t, it is still going to, of course, work. And I'm going to say at first e. So it's gonna give me back nothing. So where this nothing is coming from is um, the final result of do f is nothing, right? Because I have the, 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 the cases of, of maybe unit are either just this or nothing. And that's what we've returned right here. Now, if I say do f again, and I say, hey, it's going to print x. So I guess, oh wait, sorry, I am, uh, interesting. I'm not sure, what, I'm not honestly sure how to explain that. Um, but I'm sure it's just because I'm not looking at my code very deeply. Anyways, not important. So as, as expected, it prints out hey, because that's what I tell it to do. And then it's going to return just uh, unit at the end, showing that this sequence of monadic maybe steps that we had was in fact successful. And of course, I could do the same thing where I, you know, change this up just slightly so that F2 is instead looking for hello. And I can do this a billion times over. Hey, hello, and that's gonna succeed. Now if I say do F and I say hey, but I say hey again, it's going to fail. So uh, that is um, how that works. And, and, and so, um, yeah, that is, 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 is what we're doing. And uh, I will show you guys quickly just what this is here. And I am going to, um, for this one, I, I thought I'd just copy this directly, but, oh, here it is. Perfect. So if we look at the functor instance, I guess they did write it a different way. And there, I was trying to get away from that because um, it's not as descriptive as what's going on. That's fair. Um, can I get rid of this? Oh, wait a minute, but that's not gonna work then. Although I could just do this and then I have my new type right here and 118. That's weird. Let me figure this out quick. Back, and turns out I had IO here. So that's what the issue was. Um, and then I get this issue. So I'm not sure why that's happening, but so what I was trying to get across here is how this is actually uh, functioning. So let's say we have a maybe t m a, or we'll, we'll call this a string. And we want to do a string operation on, so we're just going to say my maybe t is of the type maybe t string. And it is. Um, 
this. Maybe T pure just. Um, hello. Hello. Um, and yeah, this is still going to complain. Um, anyway, okay, I'm just going to run this in my cons or my REPL to show that it's valid, and yeah. Um, so, you know, we have this my maybe t here, and if we wanted to perform some function on the string, it is still just as easy to, to work with this a or, you know, I say A in terms of whatever type is here. In this case, we're saying it's a string. Um, and so it's just as easy to work with this string, um, no matter, and this is beautiful, no matter how many uh, monads are in the monad transformer stack, I can still work directly with the string. If I want to um, say, hello friend, then I would just say, instance. And so I'm going to do this. I'm going to run this. Um, what is the type of this? It is maybe t. Oh, so I'm still going to need to run maybe t this uh, because I'm trying to print out the full maybe t. So I need to run the maybe t which will expose the IO and then the IO will run because of the REPL. Just hello friend. And so all I had to do was fmap there. Um, same with applicative. I could, you know, if I have a bunch of maybe t's um, and, you know, one of them has a function, I can still do the exact same thing. Um, I mentioned an example where we just did something like, like this, where we fmapped a function or which will construct a, a type over um, some applicative instance and then I will combine that with some others, uh, some other applicative instances. And I can do this for any arbitrary number of steps. I mean, well, that this function can take. Uh, so I guess this would take in this and be accepting two more arguments. And so that would be where it works. Um, but I can still do the exact same thing with applicative. And I can still do the exact same thing with monad. I can still pull that, that value, right? I can still easily get this string by just doing and we have the exact same thing as if it was maybe uh, or if it was IO. We are still able to get the string in the exact same way. Um, and I'll just do this quickly for how these actually work. Um, and I'll, I'll speak at a high level because, I mean, if you want to, you can go into how these work in a bit more detail. I definitely recommend that. It will help you more, but I don't think it's the best for this video. And this is just simply, um, I tried to call it this as, oh, I guess, oh, wait a minute, but this would be, oh, that's what I need to do. Okay, sorry, I just figured it out. Makes sense. Okay, I don't, I don't know. Um, I just pretty much copied these. So, anyways, what we're doing to um, keep that fmap behavior is we are just writing the fmap instance for functor by writing two fmaps into it. Um, into our, our function definition. So one of these fmaps will apply to, and, and this is not exactly 
Oh, correct, I suppose. Well, actually, no. No, sorry. This is now correct. Uh, I don't know what's happening with this, even though I just copied it directly. Um, I believe I copied it directly. I don't know. Um, and, and and so, yeah, we're, we're just going to F map over both of these, the, both of the uh, the IO or inner monad M, um, or, or I guess functor in this case, I should say, and um, F map over uh, just, or rather maybe. Um, and then same with applicative. Um, what this is doing is extracting the function, the first C if we have just the function, and then also just the X, and then we can apply this F to X after we've done all this work, and we will re-put it together by doing return, I see the issue. What did you just? No. Okay. And oh, oh this does look a little confusing. It just threw me off. We will um, apply F to X, rewrap it in just, rewrap it in whatever that outer monad is, and then we will finally call maybe T on the result of this entire do block, which in this case is this return statement. And so this will read as um, maybe T return just F of X. Um, same with monad, we are, so what do we do here? We extract, um, so X is our, our maybe T monad. We extract the value from that, and then we run um, our monadic function of F on V, which we are calling, so V is um, actually a maybe value, and so we unwrap that again with our just, or pattern matching on, on just, and then we run our monadic function f on y. And so y um, is something like string. f is gonna be something like string to, in the, our case, um, actually, well, no, I guess it will be maybe t, what am I saying? Yes. If, if that returns a string, I should say. Uh, or I'll say more generally B, for whatever we turn uh, sh the string into. Maybe we turn it to uh, an integer, for example. And so then we're gonna also, uh, there's another step, which is just to deal with the purity here. We're gonna unwrap the maybe T, and then we're gonna directly rewrap it if we run this step here. Um, so yeah, and, and we need to do that again, just so that it also, type checks with this here um and so that's it um there is everything that we need to know about monad transformers in particular in this video um and yeah i mean there's there's a bit more to talk about um just in terms of little patterns and tricks that can make your life a little bit easier but that's that's really the gist of it um, oh, and, and, and I will add a, another function here. So I have this example just kind of kicking around. And this is, as you can see, a Google scraper. And so I have my function, um, I guess it's almost like foreshadowing, I guess. Uh, but this is um, a function I have called scrape. And scrape takes a, what does scrape do? Type of scrape. Oh wait, I would not have that imported. Um, the type of scrape, if I remember it, is scrape is, takes a scraper T, A, um, HTML, and returns a maybe A, where this A is defined by the scraper T A expression. Um, and so what is going on here, this is not maybe T, but I have maybe T here, and um, well, what do I do? I say, I say hoist maybe. And so what is hoist maybe? If we look at the type of hoist maybe, which I believe should be in scope. Okay, it's not. Uh, we're just gonna look it up here. And it turns a maybe B into, it upgrades it, right, to a maybe T. So we go from a maybe B to a maybe T MB. 
Um, and so now what this is saying is that if I do not find any of these PDFs or of these PDF links, then do not continue with the rest of these statements. So in order to get to the rest of these statements where I use the PDF links, right? So I try to, I get the PDF links um, and I have another function to actually go and grab those PDF links um, or to you know, use those links, evaluate those links. And uh, I will never run that if I do not find the PDFs to begin with, because why would I? Um, yeah, and so, you know, I have, and, and I don't need to do that, of course. I have this thing here, which uh, asks the page count, and, um, you know, it will not fail if it does not find the page count, because that's not necessarily dire to, um, you know, there are cases in which it's valid that there is no page count and it can continue on, but in the case of no PDF links, how on earth could I possibly carry on? Um, that is just a tragedy. And so, um, yeah. It, 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 hoist maybe is kind of like one of many functions where you can convert um, a, a, uh, a, a certain monadic action to its transformer. So um, just for the sake of completeness, I should also mention that, you know, we have data either A, B, which you guys will remember, uh, if you do not remember this, I have no idea why you're watching this video, to be dead honest. Um, and then we have our new type, which is actually called accept T. And this is E M A. Um, and this is going to be of the type accept, or sorry, it's going to be defined as run accept which is like that and so you know what you can see is either e being a monad right this is kind of one particular unit this fits the exact same mold as we saw with maybe maybe t um, there's also a ton of other functions or sorry a ton of other monads which they don't make sense to even mention until we have talked about monad transformers because on their own, um, like either you can use on its own and it's very valuable, maybe the same thing, um, but there's no use for these other monads. And what they are is uh, reader T, state T, and um, writer T, which will be the topic of my next couple or th few videos. Um, so yeah, enjoy and uh, have a good time. Uh, enjoy, happy, happy coding.